Hey, it's Deborah Poneman, founder of Yes to Success and Ageless Seminars. So many years ago, when I first started teaching Yes to Success, my intention was to give my students enough knowledge and as many tools as they needed so that they could wake up every morning with joy and peace in their hearts. But my real intention was that my students weren't only happy when they found their soulmates, which many did, or got on the bestseller list, which many also did, but rather my real intention was that if nothing changed in their third dimension realities, they had the same job, the same house, the same partner, the same kids, or life threw them an unexpected curveball, they would still be deeply happy just to be alive. And that's still what I want for all of you. Not the kind of happy where you're constantly jumping up and down with mirth, but a deep, quiet happiness on the inside. You see, no one ever promised you a rose garden or that your sojourn on this planet would be a cakewalk. We didn't go to all the trouble of incarnating for a cakewalk. We incarnated so that we could work through what we didn't get right last time around to welcome the challenges, knowing that that's what we're here for, to face them and not run away. It's not that we desire challenges or de deliberately manifest them, but when they show up, we, believe it or not, need to have gratitude. Because when you overcome the big challenges, that's when the greatest growth takes place. And growth is what we incarnated for. We came here to get it right this time. So that's why I don't just teach how to create outer success and wealth. I mean, I, I, I do in my Yes to Success seminars, which, by the way, I have one beginning uh, this coming week. It starts on October 26, and I only teach Yes to Success once or occasionally twice a year. So if you haven't taken the course yet, this is your chance to really and truly change your life. And uh, I have lots of students who created massive wealth and outer success from what I teach in Yes to Success, but there are thousands of other courses that teach you that. But what I want for you is for you to become not only wealthy and successful on the outside, but what I call become a living master. Not in an ego kind of way, but a master in a human body who, as the hugging Saint Amaji said, when the world shakes, remains unshakable. Masters remain unshakable because they know the truth of life. And even if they don't get what they want, they are deeply happy and content nonetheless. Because the world, your world, will continue to shake. That's what you signed up for when you incarnated at this time in this body with your circumstances. And your work here has little to do with outcomes. I mean, can we create peace in the Middle East? I don't know. But I do know that everything we do, every choice we make, either moves the needle towards peace or towards war, towards an age of enlightenment or towards an age of, of destruction. Every action you do adds to the vibration of love on the planet or it adds to the vibration of hate and fear. So for example, when you're faced with one of those why me moments, the um, really God moments, you've got to be kidding me. You know, you have a choice to face the challenge in the easy way, which is complaining about your situation, blaming others, making others wrong, being the victim, shaming yourself, uh, blaming the stars, telling your victim story once again, or you can take responsibility and say, I see my part in this. I screwed up. I'm really sorry. This is what your higher self is begging for you to do for yourself and for the world. Not only are you at that moment moving the needle one way or the other for by your action. But if you don't get it right this time, the situation will reappear again and again. So the journey is really about listening to your inner voice and trusting the voice as it's 
guiding you, trusting that if you listen to that voice of God, or you can call it your intuition or that still small voice within, even if it's telling you to do the hard thing, the vulnerable thing, the impossible thing, do it. And it will always move you forward down the path to being a living master. In fact, doing what that voice asks you to do is the only step you need to take to have everything your heart's desire for you, for your loved ones, and for the future of the planet. Just do what you feel to be the right thing at every moment, each moment, each moment, each moment. Deluding ourselves is the most dangerous thing we can do. When the challenge seems insurmountable, just close your eyes, put your hand on your beautiful heart, say a prayer, ask for divine guidance, ask the God of your understanding what step to take, or it says, or as it says in the Course in Miracles, ask that God, source, spirit, it says you ask, where would you have me go today? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? And then listen to the answer. Put those questions at the top of the page when you sit for guidance. Where would you have me go today? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? And then act on the answers as they come through. The truth is we, our small selves, we're just receptacles. Master John Douglas says that our job is simply to not be arrogant and think we know anything at any moment. Instead, listen. Listen to your higher guidance. Instead of talking so much, just let the truth unfold. But when the answers are placed in front of you, you need to take the plunge. And then let the universe, the God of your understanding, lead you and take care of the rest. So these curveballs, when they come around, don't go into despair about your bad karma. It's not the karma that determines your happiness or unhappiness. It's how you react to the karma. Every obstacle is there to overcome. Don't avoid them, face them, overcome them with strength, with purity. Don't run from them. If we, we run, we weaken our evolution. We weaken our path towards mastery. Just align your will with the purity of your consciousness, or as the beautiful teacher Corinne Chesney says, align your heart with the sacred heart of God. You can even visualize that sacred heart of God and your heart aligning with it. And then do what your heart is telling you is the right thing which often is the scary thing. But the creator rewards the courageous. And I know that sometimes what that voice tells you to do seems completely unreasonable. But when you get quiet and you listen and you surrender and you act in alignment with your higher self, you're putting the outcome in God's hands. And the most important here thing here is to trust that God knows what he, she is doing. One of my favorite quotes in the Bible is from Psalm 126, which says, when man says, show me and I will trust you, God says, trust me and I will show you. Trust me and I will show you. I think now is the time we need to remind ourselves to have faith and trust and then act in a way that we contribute to good with every one of our actions. Watch yourself. Have awareness. Maybe move more slowly. And choose the highest, the highest truth at every moment. And see what happens for you and for the world. I'll see you next week. Be safe. Thank you.